All right, guys, so here's the video for 4.2. Multiply rational expressions and divide rational expressions. If you learn how to multiply rational expressions, divide should be easy because there's that rule that says we can uh, just multiply by the reciprocal and we can get rid of the division. And this is for 4.2. I wrote 5.2 because in your worksheet it says 5.2, but it's, it's unit 4, section 2, okay? So let's talk about a few things before I even go into an example. Uh, when we want to multiply fractions, we reduce those fractions. If I wanted to just multiply uh, 10 over 15 times um, 5 over 6, okay? So I just made up these two, two fractions. If I want to multiply, we know that multiplication of fractions, we just multiply straight across, 10 times 5 and 15 times 6. It's just a straight across, across multiplication. But why would I multiply something 10 times 5 to get 50 and 15 times 6 to get a big number if I can just simplify? So first, I would simplify, simplify the fraction, and then second, I would multiply the fraction, multiply. Okay, so when we have simple numbers like this, we simplify it, then we multiply it. So if I look at the factors of 10, I know that that's 2 times 5. And the factors of 15 is 3 times 5. So I know that they both have a 5 in common. I can definitely reduce that 5. I don't need that fraction. This is a larger fraction. It's an equivalent fraction to 2 thirds. So I can reduce this 5. And we would have, instead of 10 over 15, we would have 2 thirds. Much smaller fraction to multiply. But then 6 is also uh, factorable. We can factor as 2 times 3. So now I have a much um, a smaller number here, 2 factors. And if I look over diagonally, I also have 2's. So between 10 and 6, we have a common factor of 2. So we can also reduce those common factors and end up with just 3 here. Now here I reduce completely the 2 and the 5, so I end up with just a 1. So now look at how easier this multiplication would be. 1 times 5 is 5, and 3 times 3 is 9. So if I had multiplied 10 times 5, it would have been 15. 15 uh, and 15 times 6, and then I would be able to reduce it. I would end up with 5 ninths no matter what, okay? So as you can see, what I would like for you to see is that I factored. I saw common factors, and I reduced it. And then I multiply it straight across. That's exactly the same idea we want to do with polynomials. We want to first, with polynomials, for polynomials, First, we want to factor, factor completely, and then we want to reduce, and then reduce. And when I mean reduce, I mean what we just did here with the fives. We reduced this fives, and then we did with the twos here as well. Some people like to call it cancel, but we're just reducing these common factors and then just keeping the non-common factors. So for polynomials, we're going to factor completely, and then reduce it, and then we are ready to just multiply. Multiply, okay? And in multiplication, notice that I did numerator times numerator, denominator times denominator to create my new, my, my answer, my new fraction. So those are the steps when it comes to polynomials. So let's take a look at, it, at an example. If I see this example right here, I see that it's a multiplication. There we go, there's a multiplication. I have a monomial, it's just a single term, it's a 3x squared, and then we have a binomial, x plus 2. We have to understand the difference between a monomial, monomial, which is one term, and a binomial, binomial, which is two terms, okay? Whenever I have two terms, an addition or a subtraction is uh, operating on two terms, I have to find a greatest common factor between those two terms and then factor that out and see if I can reduce it, just like we did th with the number 10. So here there's nothing common between an x and a 2, so this binomial is already simple, as simple as it can be, as reduced as it can be. 
Over here I have a monomial and there's nothing I can reduce it from here. So this two fractions over here is already reduced. There's nothing I can do about it. A lot of the students think that they can cancel this x and one of these x's over here. But a binomial is together by an addition, is operation of addition or subtraction. It's a grouping situation. We don't want to reduce that, okay? We would if we had a factor in the front. If I had an x in the front here, then I, yes, I would reduce it, okay? So remember, to reduce something, to reduce something, we are looking for factors, okay? Factors, meaning a multiplication, a, a value times another value, so we can factor it. We cannot reduce something that is an addition or a subtraction, okay? We don't know what this variable is to be able to reduce up here. So you have to be careful with that. So over here, this first fraction, there's really nothing I can do about it. So I'm going to leave it at my, as my 3x squared over x plus 2. But let's see over here. Over here we have a trinomial. We definitely can factor this. So if you see a trinomial, you immediately want it to factor it. What are the two binomials that when multiply gives me this trinomial? So I know that x times x will give me my x squared, okay? If I was doing my guess and check method. Two values that multiply that gives me a 2 would be 1 times 2. And two values that multiply that gives me x squared would be x times x. So I know that these are the factors I want to use right here, and 1 and 2. When I put a 1 here and a 2 here, 1 times 2 gives me that, that constant term. But 1 plus 2 gives me the middle term, so I know it works. Okay, That's how we check with guess and check. And then over here, it's just a monomial. It's an x value. There's really nothing we can reduce. Now that I factored completely, like I told you in my first step, first, first factor completely, and then you reduce, and then reduce completely. Okay? So I can reduce horizontally, up and down, or I can redu reduce diagonally. We already decided that these two terms have nothing in common to reduce, but I see that I have this x plus 2 here, and this x plus 2 here. So I know that they can be reduced, okay? It was similar to our 2 and 2 in the previous fraction, okay? When I showed you this example over here, it's like this 2 was reduced with this other 2 over here. So that's exactly what I'm doing here with this x plus 2 can be reduced with this x plus 2. And then we see this x over here. This x can be reduced with one of these x's up here because x squared is just x times x. So I know I can reduce this x with one of these x's over here. So now, as a result, all I have in this fraction is a 3x all over. This got completely reduced, so all we have is a number 1 left over. Times, now here we have an x plus 1, and here it got completely reduced, so all we have is a number 1. So look at how much easier it is to multiply these two fractions than the original uh, larger fraction we had. So now I can just multiply straight across, and I will have 3x times at the quantity of x plus 1 all over 1 times 1, which some people like to write it. It is not necessary to write over a 1, okay? Now, some students like to FOIL it in, multiply it in, distribute, use the distributed property. It is really not necessary. We will accept the answer of 3x times the quantity of x plus 1. Or, if you decide to use the distributed property, it would get 3x squared plus 3x. So both of these are equivalent expressions. It's an answer to our multiplication of the fractions. Okay? So either way is good. I prefer that you just leave it this way. There's really no reason to factor um, to multiply it in and, and keep it separate this way. So as you can see, the steps are always the same. Check to see if you have a monomial. Does it need to be reduced? Check to see if you have a binomial. Be careful with binomials. We cannot just reduce because we have a uh, an addition in there, okay? And then uh, to reduce, we need to have common factors. And then um, once you're done reducing, you can just go ahead and straight and multiply. So let's try one more problem. Let's see, I have from your worksheet, we have from worksheet 4.2, we have this example right here, multiplication. So look, I have a trinomial. I like to, lay, to know exactly what I'm dealing with here. I have a trinomial. That means I want to do the guess and check method or the x-factor method 
to factor this completely. Over here I have a binomial, but immediately I see 16 is a squared number, and so is x squared. So I have a difference of two squares. Here we have a binomial. We've got to be very careful with binomials. We have to look for GCF to see if it exists one. And here again I have a trinomial. So if you identify what you have first, then you know what factoring you will need to do. My numerator will be, <clears throat> I'm going to use the guess and check method. Okay. So first, <clears throat> what are the two values that multiply that gives me x squared? That would be x times x. And then what two values that multiply that gives me 12, positive 12, something with negative. Well, let's see. Negative 2 times negative 6, that gives me positive 12. And he already, I already know that he adds up to a negative 6. I could have think of negative 3 times negative 4. That does multiply and give me 12, but that adds up to be negative 7. So I'm definitely going to go with this guy right here. So we are done here. X minus a 2 and X minus a 6. I know if I multiply, I get a positive 12. But if I add them, we get a negative 8x. So we are okay for the top one. Over here we have a difference of squares. So I, we, are, we are, should be very skilled at difference of squares. We have an x times an x and a negative 4 plus a 4. I know if I multiply this 2, I will get negative 16. Okay? So we are done factoring because that's the first step is factor completely completely and then reduce before we multiply okay I know that's my first step here we have a binomial two terms by an addition okay put together by an addition I'm gonna look what they both have in common which would be a 4 if I divide a 4x by a 4 we have an x okay if I divide a positive 16 by a 4 we have a positive 4 if you want to double check do a backwards, like m distribute it in. 4 times x is 4x, and 4 times 4 is 16. So I know I factor this completely. Over here, again, we have a trinomial. So just like the numerator here. So let's see what we have in common. Looks like two numbers that multiply that gives us positive 4, but it adds up to negative 4. Immediately 2 times negative 2. That should work. So negative 2 and negative 2. So I factored completely. Now I'm going to go into reducing. Okay? Let's see if there's something horizontally first. Um, we have an x minus 2 and a minus 6. So nothing here reduces horizontally. Let's see vertically. I do see an x plus 4 and an x plus 4. So let's reduce those two common factors. And let's see diagonally this way. We have an x minus 2 and an x minus 2. And is there anything else? Uh, nope, that's it. Now I am ready to multiply the numerator times the numerator. So we have a 4 times an x minus 6 all over. Denominator times denominator. We have an x minus 4, quantity of x minus 4, times the quantity of x minus 2. You do not, do not need to FOIL. We like to call it the FOIL, right? We do not need to distribute and multiply them together. We may keep the factors separate like this. Looks good enough for us. Uh, and that is the final answer. As you can see, the steps is the same every single time. You must be good at factoring. Because once you factor it, reducing is easy. And then multiplying it straight across it should be an easy step as well. Okay? Now that we did multiplication a few times, what about division? Okay? So look at division over here. As you saw in class with numbers, if I multiply, if I'm dividing, okay, if I'm dividing, um, let's see, 4 sixth divided by 1 half. Okay? If I have this kind of division, it can also be written 4 sixth divided by 1 half. That's also division. Division can be shown in both ways. So if I am dividing a fraction by another fraction, I can multiply both of them by the reciprocal to get rid of the, d the denominator. If I multiply over here by 2 over 1, 
immediately this reduces and becomes just a 1. But if I do it in the denominator, I better do it in the numerator. If I multiply by the reciprocal, then I can take care of multiplication instead of division. That's what the students like to call it, the keep, change, and flip method, is because they realize that all they have to do is switch it to a multiplication by multiplying by the reciprocal. Okay? That is exactly the same case I want to do here. I am going to do the same thing here. So the first step I want to do is I want to keep the first fraction, change from division to multiplication, but use the reciprocal of this fraction, exactly the way I did here. So I'm going to keep it x squared minus 6x minus 16 all over x squared plus 4x minus 21. Change it to multiplication. And let's use the reciprocal of this fraction over here, which is x squared minus 8x plus 15 all over x squared plus 9x plus 14. So I switch my division to a multiplication and I'm back in multiplying, okay? The reason why we can do that is just because we're multiplying by the reciprocal on both sides. Um, if I would show you the meaning of this, all it is is I'm multiplying by the reciprocal on this side and on this side, and then this would reduce to a one, we would have just a multiplication over here, dividing by one. So exactly the same idea as over here, okay? So I can, I can change a division into multiplication by multiplying by the reciprocal. And then it becomes the same case. I have a trinomial, a trinomial here, a trinomial here, and a trinomial here. Lots of trinomials. I'm going to do a lot of guess and check, okay? So we have this trinomial over here. We see x times x are the factors of x squared. And then two numbers that multiply to give me a negative 16. Um, you can think of 2 times 8. So maybe a positive 2 and a negative 8. So when I multiply, I get a negative 16. But when I add, I get a negative 6. Okay? So plus a 2 and minus an 8. When I multiply, I get a negative 16. But when I add, I get a negative 6. And that works. Now let's do the guess and check here. Two numbers that multiply, that gives me x squared is x times x. Okay? And then multiplication here, I think of 3 times 7 comes to my mind immediately. Um, 3 is going to have to be negative, 7 is going to have to be positive. So when I add these two terms, we get positive 4. So negative 3 and positive 7. Okay, one more time here. The factors of this trinomial is x times x. Two numbers that multiply, that gives me f positive 15. I think of 3 and 5. Negative 3 times negative 5 is positive 15, and they do add up to a negative 8. So negative 3 and negative 5. Our last guess and check is the denominator here. Again, is x times x. Um, 2 times 7. 2 times 7 gives us 14, and it does add up to a 9. So plus 2, plus 7. As you can see, you have to be really good with multiplication, just simple multiplication from elementary school, and think of multiplication, think of factors of a number, that, and then try to make it add up to the middle term. All right, I factored completely, which was my first step, to factor completely, and now reduce. is the, is the easy part, right? We're looking for common factors. Let's do a horizontally first. Anything here in this fraction that could be reduced? Nope. Let's start doing it diagonally. I see a minus a 3 and an x minus a 3. So those two reduces. We see a plus 2. So this 2 reduces as well. x plus 2 quantities right here. Um, this is a plus 7 and minus 5, minus 8 and plus 7. We cannot reduce it denominator with denominator. That is not OK. OK? So we are done. Now we can multiply straight across. Numerator times numerator, denominator times denominator. So our answer is x minus 8, quantity times the quantity of x minus 5, all over x plus 7, quantity of x plus 7, times the quantity of x plus 7. They're both the same. If you may write it again. Some people like to, to make it things simpler and nicer. This is good enough for me, by the way. But if some people like to go further, 
quantity of x minus 8 times the quantity of x minus 5 all over x plus 7 squared because they have two of them. That looks nice as well. Both of them are nice. So, and that's how we go from division to multiplication. Okay, So it's not much different than the multiplication we were already doing. So hopefully this, this video helps you with multiplication um, of rational expressions and division of rational expressions. Okay? So good luck.